Hello chess lovers, Zorin here and I have another fantastic game for you played by the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal. His opponent is Gedeon Barsa and this game was played in 1971 in Tallinn. Now let's see how the game went on. Barsa started the game with knight f3 and g6 by Tal, g3, bishop g7, bishop g2. These first three moves are the hallmark of the King's Indian attack, which Barca has played so often that some opening books call the opening system by his name. d6 by Tal, d3. Of course, d4 looks more vigorous, but Barca prefers the restrained style. He played d3, e5 by Tal, e4, knight c6, knight c3, knight e7, Tal avoids the symmetry and aims at an early f7, f5. Now if castling king side then we would transpose into two earlier Barca Tal games won by Tal. So Barca was clearly trying to vary and he played bishop e3. Tal castled king side, queen d2, knight d4. Tal is placing his knight on this active square and a terrible blunder by Barca knight e2. After which black is getting a winning position. Well, it was better to castle king side or go for h4. But in the game we see knight e2. And here Tal made a fantastic move. He placed his bishop on h3 square. Look at this. This is a powerful deflective move. The idea is that if bishop takes h3, then knight takes f3 fork is winning on the spot. That's why in the game after bishop h3, Barca played knight takes d4, but actually it was better to castle king side, though after knight takes f3, bishop takes f3, Mikhail Tal is winning the rook and again this is going to be winning. That's why in the game after bishop h3, Barca went for knight takes d4. This is a move which actually leads to very complex variations. Bishop takes g2, right now the rook and the knight on d4 are hanging, rook g1, he takes d4, knight takes d4. Barca still is not resigning, now he will try to trap this light squared bishop. c5 by Tal, he's counterattacking white knight, but actually bishop h3 was also playable. If g4 with the idea of rook g3, then queen d7, if f3, then c5, and then f5. Again, this is going to be winning, but in the game after knight takes d4, we see c5. Knight b5, bishop f3, g4, again with the same rook g3 threat in order to win the bishop, and d5 by Tal. Of course, Tal could also capture the pawn on b2 square, if rook b1, then bishop e5. But as you know, Tal is not a pawn grabber. He loves to make the position very complex and he himself likes sacrifices. By playing d5, he allowed white to win this pawn on c5 square. Rook c8, bishop a3. Now this dark squared bishop will put pressure on this diagonal. d takes e4, d takes e4 and queen b6. This is a vigorous move which is shattering white's illusions. Actually Barca was hoping for exchange of queens, after which white can recapture with the king. Right now the knight on e7 is hanging. If Rook e8, then king e3, white will finally manage to trap the bishop on f3 square. Though the engine says that after king takes d2, black can respond with bishop takes e4. If bishop takes e7, then rook e8. If knight d6, then rook takes c2 check, and then rook takes e7. If knight takes e4, then f5. If king d3, I'm pinning the knight and attacking the rook, then rook takes b2. If g takes f5, then g takes f5. And again, black has a winning position. But Tal chose a very interesting line which actually leads to complications. He played queen b6. He's allowing white to capture on e7. We see bishop takes e7. In return, Tal is capturing on b5. Bishop takes f8, queen takes b2. Actually, this is a line which requires a lot of calculations and we will see that Tal had calculated everything up to the end. Bishop takes g7 was played, 
This dying bishop is still protecting the rook on a1 square. King takes g7 was played. Already the rook is hanging and rook c1. Well, if we move like queen c1, then this time white king can easily get checkmated. Actually, this light squared bishop on f3 square is simply demoralizing white's army. Rook c1 was played and a powerful move by Mikhail Tal. Can you find his next move? Ready? This time Tal played rook d8. Did you find this move? The idea is that if queen takes d8, then the queen is no longer protecting the rook on c1 and again white king can get checkmated. That's why after rook d8, queen e3 was played. Actually, this is an insane game, guys. Just in the opening, Mikhail Tal managed to win a piece. But right now, if we have a look at the position, Tal is an exchange and a pawn down. How on earth is this possible? Here, Mikhail Tal made another fantastic move. He played queen take c2. Look at this. Again, Tal is exploiting the weakness of the first rank. The queen can't be captured because of this checkmate. After queen takes c2, Barca played king f1, but here comes rook d1 check, and finally get on Barca resigned. If rook takes d1, then queen takes d1, and again white king is getting checkmated. This was truly a remarkable game played by the magician from Riga. Just from the opening tell went for that killer bishop h3 move, then things got very complicated, we saw a lot of sacrifices on the board and finally Mikhail Tal managed to beat his opponent in the most amazing style. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you and for more games, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.